Hey everybody, good morning. So I just wanted to share a little bit. Um, thanks for joining in. Um, in terms of just what I'm, what I'm understanding, what has been in my path the past couple weeks and share just what's up with all that. And, um, you know, sometimes when I do a really quick video, it's, um, it's a quick blip or snapshot of trying to capture just the essence of what I'm dealing with. And no, nobody can really understand what you're going through or what you're dealing with when they're not putting the whole picture into context and they're not threading all those points together to really understand the, it, the huge impact that someone or something or some circumstance has on somebody's life. And I just want to, you know, share some of this so that you kind of comprehend, um, just get a deeper understanding of, of an example. So just for the record, I don't have a vendetta against drug addicts or alcoholics or narcissists. I don't have this evil, you know, I'm out to get them kind of philosophy. That's not at all who I am. You know, actually I'm the kind of person that's too busy to be worried about what somebody is doing or not doing. Um, that's the real truth in this scenario. Um, which is the case. I was so busy living my life, living my life for God, doing things that were building other people up. Um, I was completely, you know, managing multiple projects and multiple people um, for the glory of God, for God's victory. That's what I was focused on. Um, but the but the, the challenge in this scenario of what I've personally gone through in my season of time here is that I had no idea the magnitude that my fiance was lying about, was manipulating about, was coercing about, was literally stealing about the magnitude was so great and I had no idea because he had found a way to manipulate the situation so that I continued to be so busy that I didn't notice what was really going on. Um, in my home I had certain areas that were designated for storage like any other person in any other person's home okay there were you know closets and linen closets and you know um, what do you call them? like <clears throat> areas designated for storage just to put it simply and a normal person who maintains a normal home is going to have everything in its place and that's how I operated. If I had cleaning supplies, they were located in the cleaning supplies spot within the cabinet. If I had paper towels and linens and napkins and washcloths, they were in a different designated cabinet or area. So the point is, if I needed to find something, within 30 seconds, I could find it. And it was organized, it was clean, it was efficient, it was orderly, and my home had structure. It had a place for everything and a purpose for everything. So I was operating out of a functional, organized environment. I was an efficient, person that had command over the people, places, and things in my environment. And when people came into my environment, they clearly understood who I was, 
what was expected of them, how they were to behave in my environment, meaning following the Ten Commandments, being kind, no cursing, etc. Okay, and so I was clear about what my expectations were, and if somebody was going to violate that environment or those rules and agreements within that environment, they were asked to leave. It's as simple as that. Um, and so what goes on in somebody else's home, what goes on in somebody else's environment is on them and that's their agreements. But in my home, there were specific agreements. And so when you walked in, there was a very easily displayed uh, sign that had the Ten Commandments. And it clearly expressed like other little signage and stuff, you know, first seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those things will be, you know, um, handed to you. So the whole point is there were many examples of scripture and, you know, living in God's way, in God's design that were displayed in my environment that I was living in that reality for myself and my life. And what, what my fiance Eric did was that he figured out who I was. He pretended himself to be in alignment with who I was. And he maliciously, mischievously, you know, pretended to be someone that he was not. And he did this with a grand purpose to steal, kill, and destroy from, you know, me and my family and my environment and to get whatever he could. But I did not understand the magnitude or the great impact of what he was trying to do because I was so focused on actually living, not doing the things that he was doing. I was focused on living and building other people up and encouraging people and helping people and being a servant to people. That is what I was focused on. So when Eric died, okay, there was a great period of mourning, of grief, of shock, of disappointment. I was engaged to somebody that had presented themselves to be a particular way. And in reality, they were not who they presented themselves to be. And when they had, when he had a mishap and when he quote relapsed and when he went through the motions of acting as if he was quote back in recovery, he was presenting himself to be in a place that he was really not, okay? And in the past three years since his death, yes, we're coming up on three years, there is a trail of wreckage. And when I mean trail, I mean humongous trail of wreckage. And it's all the unfinished things that he said that he completed that he didn't. It's all the lies. It's the financial ruin and stealing. It's the, you know, taking of assets and selling them and not having things that you plan for for the future because they're all gone and missing. All the cash that I had saved for years, gone. Coins, gone. Jewelry, gone. Okay. Um, and that's just the simple stuff, antiques, heirlooms, all kinds of things that I spent a lifetime of preparing for my later days. And when he figured out where these things were after he broke into my computers and he 
uncovered my passwords and he found out how to break down my systems and I had many systems in place. I had a virtual private network. I had, you know, just, I had so many things in place to protect me and my data and my assets. But the point is he was devious and he found a way to break down those systems. And as a result, I've spent the past couple of years, number one, identifying and understanding the magnitude of his manipulation and then repairing all of these things. Now, a person that's doing drugs, the evidence of them doing drugs in this particular type of way, however he did drugs, was he burned drugs. Okay, so the most obvious was in a light fixture in my in the light fixtures in my bathrooms on the sides of my toilets. Um, those are the most obvious, but the less obvious were literally in a drawer, like in a desk drawer, in a, a cabinet, in a cubby underneath of a piece of furniture that's underneath that you're not going to get on your back and normally look under a piece of furniture. So he took inconspicuous spaces and places and all of these places are burn marks. They're drug marks. They're cut line marks. He was snorting whatever he was snorting all the time. I've got razor blade marks on so many different pieces of furniture, walls, um, and behind furniture, wherever he had furniture, there was you know, cut lines on the walls, on the floorboards, on, you get what I'm saying, on another piece of glass or a piece of wood that was in a drawer that was, you get what I'm saying? So it's like he had a system. He had a system down that whenever I was not in his vision, he had a place where he could do drugs and it was right in front of me, but I didn't see it because he was so good at lying and covering up and being mischievous and rebellious and here I am after I've recovered through the initial grief part of just oh my gosh he's gone this person that I love the person I was trying to create a life with I miss him I miss all these positive things because again he love bombed me with a huge portion of this is who I, he was presenting a certain portion of who he was saying, this is who I am. When in reality, he wasn't even that person. That was his fake persona. It wasn't even a reality. He was completely demon possessed. And that was his MO the entire time. But the whole point is he was doing everything that he was doing in an effort to cover up the fact that he had an agenda and his agenda was drugs, 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 whores, 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 steal, steal, steal. I mean, that was literally his agenda. And when you're looking at the impact to a person and their life, meaning me, okay, I had my life in order, so it seemed, but Underneath of my entire order and my system and efficiency and running a household and all of that inside of that in my system of order and cleanliness and godliness, he had created a sub system of drugs and creating my space into a drug den inside of my order and function. So inside of a cabinet, he's burning his drugs, but I don't realize that he's burning drugs right in front of me because he's doing it inside of a cabinet and I'm not looking inside of every single cabinet every single day, monitoring what he's doing or not doing. If he was gonna, if I said, oh, will you go get this on the shelf over there? I, I need that. Um, and so he would get up and stand on the ladder or whatever to do a project for me. And meanwhile, while he's doing that, I might be doing something else, or I might have run to the store, or whatever, but then now I'm cleaning for Passover, and as I'm cleaning, I'm finding all of these burn marks in the corners of the walls of the ceiling of my room, in the tops of the cabinets, inside of the cabinets, inside of a cubby, inside of a desk drawer, all of 
these areas where he had stashed razor blades and lighters and drugs and do you get what I'm saying so literally every single space that he could put a drug he put a drug and I had no idea that any of this was going on because I'm not a drug addict I don't think like a drug addict I don't use the kind of drugs that he was using therefore why would I think about putting a razor blade in between you know underneath of a desk wall or something it's just not part of my reality I wouldn't think that so therefore I'm not thinking that something would be there or that I'd even need to look to that level to constantly be behind somebody to clean them from whatever nonsense they're doing so all I'm getting at is that it's one thing if you're like oh wow in this drawer I found you know some drugs okay or drug paraphernalia that that's bad enough okay what I'm talking about is over this three years not all in one clip in, in multiple many days and many times of finding some type of evidence of his drug use it has presented and painted a very different picture of who he was and who he claimed that he was when in reality he was not a man for God or of God because a person that is a person for God is not in the thralls of addiction because when you surrender your whatever it is that your sin that you're in when you truly surrender to the Lord the Lord changes you whether it's in an instant or it's over several months or it's over a couple of years there is a huge this is who I was before and this is who I am now and I'm no longer operating in the old man I'm operating in the new man I'm not doing all these crazy antics that I used to do I am living in a completely different lifeline and truth and the way of what God, the Lord God intended for me to live and for you to live. And so what I'm getting at is that I thought that he was living a life of recovery and living being a clean and sober person. And in reality, he was never clean and sober. He was presenting himself to be one way but in reality he was still hiding malicious rebellious behavior behind the scenes hidden okay and now that all of these things that I've discovered that were once hidden that are now full-blown evidence of what who he really was and what he really was about the point is you add it all up okay and when you make a list and you add it all up, it is absolute insanity what a drug addict in active addiction is capable of. What a narcissist, a person who is completely demonically possessed will do in order to manipulate people, places, and things. And when you realize that that is really what's going on, whoa. Okay, to recover from that takes an extreme amount of diligence and consistency and repetition of constantly going through the same process of clearing out and finding more things. And I've had to do this with storage lockers and pieces of furniture, etc., etc., etc. And it has taken me all of this time to thoroughly go through everything in my life to discover and uncover and take out all of the evidence of damage, okay? And then the past couple weeks, I've really been focused on the repair of that damage, that accumulated damage. And here's a list of what was just done. Sprayers on sinks were broken. Floors were pulled up 
and he was stashing drugs inside of the floorboards, okay? Um, light fixtures were damaged. Toilets were damaged. Um, he was, you know, he was having sex with whores and plumbing issues that revealed, you know, all these condoms that he was using and, you know, ru ruining the plumbing in, in my apartment. Um, you know, walls in my home were just covered in, you know, grime, drug grime, razor blade marks, um, burn marks within furniture, tops of furniture, antique furniture, just things that I took well for many, cared for and took care of well for many years. All of those items need to be repaired because he damaged them. Damaged them to the point where it's like starting all over again. Like you've got to repaint the whole piece of furniture because of the level of how he ruined whatever he was doing with his drugs. Just, the list is, it's just, it's so much, it's hard to even put into words the amount of damage that he's done. Um, you know, in my kitchen, just pots and pans, and I kept looking at them going, what the hell is this? You know, and I'm thinking, you know, what did he cook when I was away? I was only away for a couple hours, but now I'm realizing he was using my pots for burning drugs. Do you get what I'm saying? Like all of these things now add up. He was literally using everything that he could to continue his drug addiction to whatever level he was doing it at. And the sad part of this story is that what once could have been a sweet soul of a person, loving God, having an interest in following God, when a person is under a demonic oppression and, you know, manipulation, demonic, devilish oppression, possession, okay, that person may be holding on to their one personality going, and, and whether you call it personality disorder, whatever. The point is, he could have been holding on to this, oh, I'm, I'm good, everything's fine, I love you, let me do what I can do for you, baby, I love, you know. He could be presenting this particular persona in a certain way, illustrating that he's this kind person that loves me and whatever. And that's just one sliver of the magnitude of the cover-up of who he really was, okay? But the reality is, he was a very evil person. That is the bottom line to this story. And when you uncover the whole mounds of wreckage, like I have, and now I'm in the repair phase of going, I've got to replace this top on this desk. I've got to repaint my entire apartment because of all the burn and burn marks and razor blade marks on my floors and my walls. That's a huge expense and it's all because a drug addict in active addiction was lying and manipulating and being a narcissist. So I'm just trying to share all this with you so that it will help you to be aware.